Good morning. Our lecture today will be about the hormones of the adrenal gland, both the cortex and medullary hormone. The objective of this lecture is to state the biosynthetic pathway involved in the production of the adrenal hormone, both from the cortex and from the adrenal medulla, and to understand the mechanism and the uh, stimulating factor that regulate the production of this hormone, including the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, determine the role of each of these individual hormone, and also list the biochemical hormonal test that should be performed when we have uh, abnormal increase or decrease in the production of this hormone and uh, we suspect that we have adrenal dysfunction. The adrenal gland composed of two main parts, the adrenal cortex, which is the outer part and composed of three layers, and also we have the in, uh, adrenal medulla. The outer part is the adrenal cortex and the inner part is the adrenal medulla. The hormone produced by these two regions are different uh, chemically and the function also differ. The adrenal cortex composed of three layers. We have the outermost layer called the zone glomerulosa and it secretes the mineral corticoid while uh, to the inside we have the zone fasciculata secrete the glucocorticoid and the inner one of the adrenal cortex is the uh, zona reticularis and it mainly secrete the androgens. Uh, to the, uh, the inner part of the uh, adrenal cortex, we have the adrenal medulla and it is considered as part of the sympathetic nervous system, mainly uh, secrete catecholamine. Zona glomerulosa mainly secrete the mineral corticoid. The most important is aldosterone. It is very important in regulating the um, certain mineral electrolyte and in acid-base homeostasis. Mainly, it's involved in the regulation of sodium and potassium level by modulating the level of renal uh, handling of these two elements and uh, control the urine excretion. The zona fasciculata secrete mainly the glucocorticoid. The most important one is the cortisone and it is important for the metabolism of carb, the protein and fat and also it mediates the body response to stress. While the reticularis is the uh, main secretion is androgens. The biosynthesis of the adrenal cortical steroid hormone راح نبدي بالطبق الأوتر اللي هي الكورتيكس و later on we will talk about the medullary hormone The uh, adrenal cortical hormone are uh, they have the same precursor which is cholesterol Cholesterol, the first step uh, in the synthesis it is a common step uh, the, uh, it is converted to pregnenolone this is the very uh, first step and the very important one because it is a rate limiting step. هي اللي تحدد النيد تتغير حسب النيد. And it depends on the enzyme activity. The uh, substrate available اللي هو الكوليسترول وتعتمد على inhibitory feedback loop that يعتمد أيضا على layer. A rate limiting step, we say that it is the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone. هذه أهم خطوة لأنه هي تحدد ال ال تعتبر ال rate limiting step. و it is converted. This conversion occurs by the cytochrome p55 side chain dysmolase. إذن the enzyme that converts cholesterol to pregnenolone is the dysmolase. وهذه نعتبرها هي the rate limiting step. We can see in this schematic the presentation, uh, the cholesterol in all layers will be converted to pregnenolone. In all the three layers, it is converted to a pregnenolone. Then the pregnenolone, according to the 
enzyme that are found in each in each layer it is converted to uh, pregnenolone by the enzyme converted in this uh, zona fasciculated to cortisol and in this in the all uh, in the uh, zona uh, glomerulosa is converted to aldosterone while in the reticularis it is converted the same cholesterol converted to pregnenolone and then it will be converted to androstenedione this uh, conversion from cholesterol to pregnenolone is converted by the enzyme p450 uh, dismolase and this is the rate limiting step we can see that there is many uh, intermediate steps that end in the formation of the final product uh, which is layer specific uh, these in green are the uh, enzyme which are specific to each layer um, the importance of knowing this enzyme we will concentrate only on certain enzyme in which when we have deficiency uh, that lead to certain disease for example pregnenolone are converted to progesterone by the enzyme 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase then progesterone converted to 17 alpha hydroxyprogesterone by 17 alpha hydroxylase then converted to androstenedione and by this enzyme 21 alpha hydroxylase it will convert it to uh, intermediate substrate then finally it will be converted to cortisol by 21 alpha hydroxylase it is common in these two layers uh, it will be converted to uh, aldosterone finally so 21 alpha hydroxylase mediate the production of cortisol and aldosterone from progesterone why we concentrate on this on this enzyme because deficiency of this enzyme may lead to a certain condition or certain disease that we will talk about later so cholesterol is the precursor by the smallase change to pregnenolone then pregnenolone change to progesterone these are common steps later on this will be converted to 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone um, it will be converted later on to uh, androgens, androstenedione, then testosterone, uh, gonadal hormone. While in the uh, by 21 hydroxylase, and depending on the layer, uh, may be converted to cortisol or to aldosterone. Deficiency of, of certain enzyme like 21 alpha hydroxylase or 11 beta hydroxylase or uh, 17 alpha hydroxylase results in certain syndrome. We have certain protein that is called sterogenic acute regulatory protein. It's very important because it will carry the mediator or the precursor of it, of all the steroid hormone, which is cholesterol. It will carry it from the inner mitochondrial membrane. Most of the steps in the production of these steroid hormone are sequential hydroxylation at the position of 17, 21, and 11 beta position. All adrenal cortical hormone, whether they are neurocorticoid, or they are glucocorticoid, or androgens, all of them are steroid in nature. While the adrenal medullary uh, hormone are uh, amino acid derived, so they differ in their structure. The first uh, category is the mineral corticoid. We have the most important one is aldosterone. It is very essential for life. Uh, the uh, main function is to sodium uh, retention and excretion of potassium. So by doing this, uh, it will maintain the extracellular uh, fluid volume and maintain the blood pressure within the normal homeostatic level. Its receptors are found mainly in the renal collecting tubule and in the salivary gland and sweat gland. The main regulator for its function are three systems. 
first of all or three stimuli we have the renin angiotensin system the second one is the potassium level and the third and the least and for least important is the ACTH the renin angiotensin system is the most important uh, renin is a proteolytic enzyme produced by the kidney when there is decrease in the blood volume or excessive sodium uh, loss there will be stimulation of the production of the renin renin is an enzyme from the kidney from the kidney renin will convert a certain substance it is called angiotensinogen it will convert it to another material or substance that is called angiotensin 1 then we have certain uh, another enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme which will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 then angiotensin 2 stimulate the production of aldosterone if it can decrease in the blood volume for example shock uh, bleeding whatever the cause or when we have decrease in the blood sodium level uh, stimulation to the system we have certain at a proteolytic enzyme called renin will be released from the juxtaglomerular apparatus in the kidney renin راح يحول لنا certain material called angiotensinogen يحولها الى angiotensin 1 وبعدين by another enzyme uh, called angiotensin converting enzyme تحول angiotensin 1 الى 2 والangiotensin 2 هو اللي يحفز the production of aldosterone aldosterone when it released نعرف الاكشن مالته انه it will retain sodium and uh, enhance the excretion of potassium when it uh, when its excretion is increased then it will uh, uh, retain with it an isoosmolar amount of water فراح يصير عندنا expansion بالبلد volume وكذلك البلس بلد level of sodium will return to normal عندنا uh, certain medication اللي هو anti hypertensive medication act on this enzyme اللي هي inhibit this enzyme the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibit uh, inhibitor inhibit this enzyme so angiotensin 1 ما راح يتحول الى angiotensin 2 and then the aldosterone production also will decrease فبهالحاله sodium retention راح يقل وال blood pressure راح يقل this is one application of the use of a drug uh, by utilizing the certain enzyme and uh, by using its mechanics to uh, have a, a role that is similar to the normal homeostasis another بما انه the uh, role of uh, aldosterone is to enhance uh, potassium excretion in the urine and retain sodium so when we have abnormal level of potassium abnormal increase in the level of potassium in the blood then this will stimulate the uh, the uh, aldosterone to be uh, increased and when aldosterone secretion is increased it will retain sodium in exchange for potassium potassium it will be excreted in the urine for mustawa of potassium mustawa rah iqil and this will return its level to a normal uh, normal homeostatic level and then our uh, controlling system for renin angiotensin the second one is the potassium mainly the hyperkalemia the third one is the ACTH and the role matter is not very important except in case of stress so when we ask about what are the control mechanism for aldosterone regulation not the feedback mechanism by the pituitary the main things is the renin angiotensin system the second is hyperkalemia these are abnormal conditions that result from excess or deficiency of the aldosterone. We have the primary hyperaldosteronism, uh, also called Quan syndrome. There will be excessive production of uh, aldosterone, maybe due to adrenal hyperplasia or adenoma or certain cancer. And as a result of increased production of aldosterone, there will be excessive pro production, excessive uh, retention of sodium together. It will bring an isoosmolar amount of uh, fluid or water with it so be hypertension and edema and in addition because each sodium that is retained there will be excretion of potassium instead of it so there will be hypokalemia and muscle weakness secondary to the uh, hypokalemia when we suspect that we have an abnormal level of aldosterone either hypo or hypo 
then we can measure the plasma potassium level, the plasma renin activity or level, and uh, together with the level of aldosterone, and we can um, make uh, compare them as a ratio, the aldosterone to renin ratio. So th these are the most important when we when we suspect that we have abnormal level of aldosterone or abno hypo, whether hypo or hypo, we can measure the plasma potassium level, the plasma renin activity, the plasma aldosterone and uh, ratio can be done by aldosterone to renin ratio. The second category of the adrenal cortical hormone are the glucocorticoid. The most important one is cortisol and we have other type like corticosterone. The uh, control, it, the main function of the glucocorticoid is mainly for control the metabolism of carb and protein and lipid, and also it's important to prepare the body uh, uh, for stress condition. And also we have another function we will uh, talk about later on. The main regulation of the uh, glucose secretion is the negative feedback control when the level of cortisol in the circulation is uh, normal or uh, an excessive amount then it will exert a negative feedback mecha uh, mechanism and decrease the production of the hypothalamic uh, corticotropinolysing hormone and then the ACTH also will, it will uh, also will decrease so the, uh, the production and secretion of cortisol will decrease and then all one is negative feedback on the pituitary and hypothalamic hormone the second uh, control mechanism is the stress. Stress, any kind of stress, it can be even hypoglycemia, it can be surgery, surgery, it can be emotional stress, whether physiological or psychological stress, lead to increase in the production of the hypothalamic CRH and the pituitary ACTH, and all and um, and all this will increase the level of the cortisol. The third mechanism is the diurnal rhythm. راح نشوف إنه uh, early morning راح ال cortisol level will be high because it prepare the body to uh, the stress condition while at uh, late evening there will be low level of cortisol so these are the main uh, regulation of cortisol is the negative feedback هو أهم واحدة وأيضا عندنا stress and the third one we have the diurnal rhythm and the regulation of uh, cortisol level or glucocorticoid in general. The effect of uh, glucocorticoid or cortisol, as we say, it have metabolic uh, effect. It have a, a hyperglycemic effect, stimulate glucose production. Uh, it have an uh, insulin opposing effect, and yani actually insulin stimulate gluconeogenesis, which is the synthesis of glucose from non-carb uh, non, uh, non sources and also it will stimulate lipolysis so it has a ketogenic effect and uh, stimulate the amino acid release by stimulating the proteolysis of the uh, muscle the cardiovascular effect it increases the contractility of the heart it maintains the plasma volume mechanism تختلف عن aldosterone the aldosterone uh, maintains the plasma volume by retaining sodium while the cortisol maintain the plas uh, plasma volume and blood pressure by increase uh, by preventing increase in vascular permeability they become half of permeability vascular tone so the blood pressure will be maintained within normal stimulate the contractility of the muscle promote sodium retention and potassium excretion and also increase the protection of the rbc where the main uh, one of the um, uh, important uh, effect of glucocorticoid in you know, the inflammatory and immune uh, response and the immune suppressive effect who have a certain medication that mimic glucocorticoid it can be used as an anti-inflammatory uh, and uh, anti use also in allergy as an immune suppressant Generally, uh, steroid hormone need transport protein. For the cortisol, we have the uh, cortisol binding globulin. This is specific for cortisol. And we have, uh, طبعاً, cortisol binding globulin can end the high affinity between it and the uh, cortisol. And uh, the other protein that can carry albumin is cortisol. Sorry, is albumin. But it have low affinity. 
Aldosterone have no specific binding protein can be bound to albumin. Then cortisol will bound to cortisol binding uh, globulin or less uh, to albumin. While the aldosterone ma in the certain um, uh, binding protein, so it will be attached to and carried by albumin. The biologically active form of the all uh, the uh, adrenal cortical hormone is the uh, free, the free one, the unbound, and about ninety percent will be bound to protein, and the remainder will be uh, free. The metabolism usually after completion uh, it will be uh, it will occur in the liver and uh, can be converted to uh, conjugated with certain metabolites. مثلا ممكن يكون تو جلوكورنايد او سلفيت and this will uh, enhance the urine excretion of these metabolites. أدنى أندروجين تختلف عن الجونادال أندروجين بأنه مين اللي هي أندروستين دايون and ديهايدرو أبن أندروستين دايون small amount is this are the main product here هذه أندروستين دايون and ديهايدرو أبن أندروستين دايون with small amount of testosterone and estrogen بينما from the gonad مين اللي هي testosterone and estrogen Either you can show for free, you can show for bound to conjugate, conjugate, like glucuronide or sulfate, or you can be attached to or carried by a protein, for example, globulin or albumin. Excess cortisol in the circulation is called lead or lead to a syndrome called cushion syndrome while decrease in the production of cortisol is what is called the result in what's called the Edison disease cushion syndrome when we measure uh, when we suspect that this patient have abnormality certain abnormality and we measure the level of cortisol and we found that there is excess cortisol in the circulation uh, this the source of this excessive cortisol could be either from primary when we we said primary means in the uh, gland itself the adrenal gland itself the primary also calls ACTH independent why because it is not secondary to stimulation from the pituitary ACTH it is due to overproduction of cortisol from the adrenal gland itself there be certain maybe a certain adrenal hyperplasia or adrenal tumor that enhance the production of excess glucocorticoid or maybe secondary the excessive cortisol is uh, secondary to increase in the amount of the stimulatory uh, hormone اللي هو ACTH could be certain ACTH <coughs> pituitary tumor secreting pituitary tumor that secrete excess ACTH uncontrolled so this will lead to excess production of cortisol we have many features of uh, Cushing syndrome like uh, moon phase um, uh, hypertension, diabetes, central obesity, thin extremities, myopathy, ممكن uh, تكون poor wound healing, and suppression of the immune response. We can divide them into endogenous causes or exogenous cause of Cushing syndrome, اللي هو excess production of excessive amount of result disease that result from excessive amount of cortisol. The endogenous causes ممكن يكون either uh, <coughs> pituitary tumor in this condition we call it cushion disease due to overproduction of pituitary ACTH أو ممكن تكون production excess production of cortisol by the adrenal gland itself for example adrenal hyperplasia or adrenal tumor or uh, ممكن تكون other unknown causes ممكن for example ال ال treatment by excessive cortisol while ال ال sorry ممكن تكون unknown causes مثلا 50% of endogenous causes اللي هي unknown cause ممكن تكون في certain tumor اللي هو paraneoplastic phenomena when there is excessive production of cortisol by a non-specified tissue إذن هي ال endogenous either pituitary or adrenal or other unknown causes اللي هي other or unknown causes ممكن تكون مثلا في paraneoplastic syndrome that secrete excess amount of ACTH or cortisol. The exogenous causes ممكن إنه by taking excess medication that uh, mimic the cortisol uh, or contain glucocorticoid ممكن it will cause the Cushing syndrome. 
مثلا certain patient they have an, a chronic disease and uh, ممكن يكون autoimmune disease or, certain, uh, auto, or allergic disease that need uh, glucocorticoid in, uh, continuously فبمرور الوقت ممكن انه يصير excess production and انه end by cushion syndrome If the cause of excess glucocorticoid in the body was a tumor, whether they are adrenal or pituitary or ectopic tumor, their production is autonomous and not subjected to the hypothalamic pituitary adrenocortical uh, axis. So there be uh, unrelated to the level of cortisol, there be production, excessive production, and we call it autonomous production. And uh, do not exhibit any feedback inhibition. So when we suspect that the patient have abnormality uh, and uh, he may have a cushion syndrome, first of all, we can check the plasma cortisol, we can check the and ACTH, we can check the 24-hour collected urine for the free cortisol excretion, and we can check the diurnal rhythm of cortisol, and then we can just confirm, we can do suppression test. The uh, principle of measurement of 24-hour urine cortisol excretion is that 90% you know, is of the corticoid we compound in a L protein, whether glo uh, co cortisol binding globulin or to albumin. Well, less than 10% will be excreted in the urine. So when we have increase in the production of the cortisol, for parallel increase in the urine excretion of cortisol, this is the first screening test. We can col uh, collect the urine over 24 hours. If there can be a lot of production, the amount of the free cortisol in the urine, this indicates that this patient have increased in the production of cortisol. The second test is uh, to measure the uh, uh, blood level of cortisol. Uh, we say that uh, the cortisol have a diurnal rhythm in its production, mainly in the early morning, it can be high, and in the, uh, at the time of uh, in the late evening, it can be low. So we can check the level at 8 to 9 a.m. in the early morning. Uh, if the level is high, and we can find also that uh, in the uh, late evening, for example, at 11 p.m., we can see that the level also is high. In this condition, it means that the diurnal rhythm is lost in the morning and evening. Both in both the time, the cortisol level is high. وهذا the واحدة من early feature of cushion syndrome. وطبعا أبدا نعتمد على random measurement of cortisol لأنه إحنا نعتمد فقط نقيسه in two time اللي هو the early morning راح نشوفه عالي وهذا التوقع نتوقع عالي وباللايت evening نتوقع مفروض مفروض إن normally يكون low. فإذا إنه increase at night it means that there is loss of diurnal rhythm. وهاي تنطينا فد uh, confirmation that this patient have a uh, uh, cushion syndrome or at least you have excess cortisol secretion uh, as we said the loss of the diurnal rhythm is one of the uh, feature and also we can measure the plasma ACTH uh, and uh, to see what, if we have excess secretion of glucocorticoid excess cortisol we can by measurement the plasma ACTH we can see whether it is a uh, uh, if, if it is low, it means that the, it is adrenal cause because by feedback inhibition it will in, in, inhibit the production of ACTH from the pituitary gland. But if it is high, both the cortisol is high and the ACTH is high, it means that the patients have a pituitary or ectopic secretion of ACTH. And then if you ACTH, you are the source of the increase. Whether it can glucocorticoid uh, cortisol ali like an ACTH is low, for the cause is adrenal. But if they both are elevated, both the glucocorticoid and cortisol will ACTH both are increased, it means that they have either pituitary tumor that secrete ACTH in excess amount, in autonomous uh, amount secretion, uh, or we have ectopic secretion, for example, uh, from uh, another tumor. Other test is the low dexamethasone suppression test. We say that if we have increased production of certain hormone, we try to suppress it. If it is suppressed by something that we know it is usually suppressed, it, uh, it this means uh, this is the normal uh, response. Otherwise, failure to suppress means that there is autonomous secretion and confirm uh, that the patient may have uh, cushion syndrome. In this test, the principle is that uh, we give something that is similar to cortisol, which is dexamethasone, it was synthetic glucocorticoid. Uh, 
راح يرتبط بالريسبتر اوف اي سي تي اتش ان ذا بيتوتري جلاند وانس اتس باوند تو ات نورمالي ات ويل بلوك اتس سكريشن اوف اي سي تي اتش اند ذس ويل بهالحاله كورتيزول ريليس اوسو سبريست فممكن ننطي الدوز ات نايت اوف ديكساميثاسون هو سينثيتيك جلوكوكورتيكوز ننطيه ات نايت ونقيس البلاد كورتيزول بالمورنينج نكست مورنينج فالمفروض انه راح نشوف اكو ديكريز بالكورتيزول سكريشن اذا بقى عالي معناته انه وي هاف uh, هذا يعني الفيلر تو سبريس هو كاركترستيك اوف كوشن سيندروم The opposite to the Cushing syndrome, we have the hypofunction, adrenocortical hypofunction, uh, in which we have decrease in the production of cortisol. Either the cause in the uh, adrenal gland itself, we call it primary, and also it is called Edison disease, or it could be secondary to the decrease in the stimulation uh, by the hypothalamic or the pituitary gland is decreased production of the CRH or ACTH. So other defect in the gland itself, for example, an autoimmune, Uh, destruction of the adrenal cortex or the cortisol secreting cell by autoantibody or example for by infection uh, whatever the cause uh, trauma tumor bleeding inside the adrenal cortex anything that destroy the cortisol uh, secreting cell so in this code we call it primary adrenal insufficiency or Edison disease or it could be secondary to the defect from the pituitary or hypothalamic in which there is decreased production of the uh, CRH on the ACTH from the hypothalamus or the pituitary respectively. To check, uh, we can measure the plasma cortisol concentration. If it is low at the early morning when we expect that the level is high, low value uh, may uh, suggest that they have a deficiency production, while if it is high in the morning, this nearly will exclude the diagnosis. We can also measure the plasma ACTH And uh, uh, whenever we whenever we have deficiency state uh, or uh, decreased production, we can stimulate the production. We do the dynamic test, which is the stimulation test, uh, which is the short and long ACTH. The short ACTH um, The principle of this test is by giving a stimulation to the production of a cortisol, which is the ACTH. We can give an synthetic ACTH. And we, uh, before we give the uh, synthetic ACTH, we measure the level of cortisol at the morning, and then we give the uh, ACTH, synthetic ACTH, uh, by intramuscular or intravenous route. And then we, uh, after a defined period of time, after, for example, 30 minutes or 60 minutes, we measure the plasma cortisol again. The normal response, we expect that normally, in normal individual, the uh, level of cortisol increase. stimulation for its protection. Some, we, we did something that simulate what happened in his body. We give ACTH and we measure the response uh, of plasma cortisol. Normally, or normal stimulation for cortisol production هو ACTH فإحنا ننطي الـ ACTH ونشوف الـ response of cortisol إذا كان عندنا uh, adrenal failure adrenal failure اللي يمكن سميناه الـ primary defect in the gland نفسها adrenal gland نفسها uh, we say that maybe we have destruction of the cortisol secreting cell even if we give ACTH the cell are destroyed so it cannot synthesize cortisol This is the short ACTH stimulation test, and we have another one in the same principle, but it is uh, long and done over, uh, over a period of days. In the uh, biosynthetic uh, pathway, we have a certain enzyme in which if we have a defect in the, this enzyme, then the whole um, pathway may be impaired. We have one of the important and common uh, disease is the congenital adrenal uh, hyperplasia uh, in which we have defect in the process of production of the adrenal cortical hormone. The most common uh, enzyme that, are, that cause the defect is the 21-hydroxylase enzyme. 21-hydroxylase, you know, due to the defect in this enzyme. Uh, if you remember, we say that this enzyme is involved in both uh, cortisol uh, secretion and also is important for aldosterone. It's involved in the two pathway. Oh, a defect estimate on the amount of the enzyme that is defective, or the amount of the damage to the enzyme, or the decrease in the production. 
فممكن يكون كلاسيك فون أو نون كلاسيك الكلاسيك يكون سيفير الكلاسيك فورم اللي يكون سيفير ديفشنسي اوف ذا انزيم فبهالحالة راح يأثر على برودكشن اوف ذا كورتيزول اند ذا الدستيرون When we have a defect in this enzyme, the end result is decrease in the production of cortisol. The decrease in the low level of cortisol in the circulation will produce a feedback to the pituitary to enhance the production to the hypothalamus and pituitary to enhance the stimulation and increase the production of the CRH from the hypothalamus and the ACTH from the pituitary by the negative feedback. راح يصير more uh, stimulation to the production the biosynthetic pathway will work and work but uh, it will uh, reach to the point to the 21 hydroxylation steps and the pathway will end at this point فراح يزيد the production الكورتيزول قليل يسوي stimulation البتوتري hypothalamus زيد the production of the CRH وال ACTH but ايضا وراح يعني stimulate the biosynthesis بس يوصل الى 21 hydroxylation steps اللي that need The enzyme 21 hydroxylase بين يوصل هاي النقطة راح يوقف ال pathway ويصير accumulation of the substrate before before this point 21 hydroxylation step وراح يصير shunting the substrate into another pathway اللي هو the sex steroid pathway. قلنا this enzyme is important for the production of cortisol and Cortisol and mineral corticoid, which is aldosterone, and it is not very important or doesn't participate in the production of androgen. So the substrate treatment before this step, before this step that need 21 hydroxylation, hydroxylase enzyme, it will be shunted to the steroid androgen steroid pathway synthesis. بالتالي راح يكون اكسسيف اندروجين ان ذس بيبي اند ذس ويل ليد اذا كان البيبي هو فيميل ذس ويل ليد تو فيريلايزيشن اوف ذا فيميل واذا كان ميل هو راح يؤدي الى بريكوشيا سكشوال ديفلوبمنت ان ان بوي طبعا بهالحاله ايضا اذا كان سيفير راح ياثر ايضا الدستيرون والبيلو راح يصير عندنا صوديوم ريتنشن راح يكون قليل ويصير الصوت ويستنج بهالحاله اند طبعا هذا يعتبر لايف ثريتنينج If we want to diagnose it, then we can we can measure the level of 17 hydroxy progesterone in the blood, and we can measure other other substrate before the block. So I can 21 hydroxylase or other. Whenever we expect that we have a block, راح نقيس ال substrate اللي before it و substrate اللي بعده راح نشوف substrate before it راح يكون an increase amount for the substrate behind the site of block blockage راح يكون قليل the product. وبالإضافة إلى the most specific one هو gene therapy أو gene study gene study. The second set of hormone that are produced by the adrenal gland is the adrenal medullary hormone. They secrete a catecholamine, which are water soluble hormone. Medulla is considered as part of the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, the uh, cell, uh, the type of the uh, hormone that are produced by the adrenal medulla, we have the adrenaline or epinephrine, the noradrenaline or the norepinephrine, and we have the dopamine. All these are produced by certain type of cell that are called the chromaffine cell. They are the first respondent to stress. They act to uh, stimulate the body to face the stress. They act within. Uh, seconds while the adrenal cortical hormone the cortisol or the glucocorticoid in general take about 20 minutes so when we are faced with certain stressful condition the first responder is the catecholamine that are uh, produced by the adrenal medulla next if the uh, condition if the time for the stress uh, prolonged more than uh, seconds and uh, take more than 20 minutes then at this time the adrenal uh, cortical hormone, a glucocorticoid, the cortisol, will start to work. The adrenal medullary hormone are important mainly in uh, uh, metabolic rule rather than the cardiovascular regulation. So they are mainly involved in the metabolic regulation. 
One of the hormones that are produced, we have the adrenaline, noradrenaline, and dopamine. Dopamine also we mentioned it in the pituitary, in the first lecture in the pituitary. It acts as a neurotransmitter and it is released by the hypothalamus. Uh, we say that it is important for the as an inhibitor uh, for inhibitory regulation, exert an inhibitory regulation over the prolactin released from the pituitary. This is a scheme that represents the biosynthesis of catecholamine. It starts from the amino acid phenylalanine, phenylalanine, which will convert it to tyrosine by the phenylalanine hydroxylase. Then it, tyrosine will be converted to DOPA. Then DOPA converted uh, by DOPA decarboxylase to dopamine. Then dopamine will convert it to noradrenaline and then to adrenaline by the mediating enzyme dopamine hydroxylase and phenylalanine or methyl and methyl as transferase. So it starts from phenyl phen phenylalanine to tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, noradrenaline, and then adrenaline in an enzyme catalyzed reaction. These hormones generally have a very short half-life, seconds only to minutes. The chromaffin cell that secrete these catecholamine, in addition to uh, the adrenaline, noradrenaline, and dopamine, they can secrete other neuropeptide. Example is the beta endorphin, the substance P, and other. Uh, the tumor of the chromaffin cell that lead to the production of excess catecholamine is called pheochromocytoma. The catecholamine have a specific uh, fate, a three, a three mechanism, the fate of them. Either they are taken by the uh, non-neuronal cell by hepatocyte, they take, uh, are taken by the hepatocyte, or they are reuptake into a secretory vesicle, or they are degraded. The, uh, enzy the enzyme that involve the degradation of catecholamine, we have two enzymes, either the monoamino oxidase or the uh, catechol or methotransferase in an abbreviation matter who are comped. And then either in a who, after a fate matter, either uptake by the uh, non-neuronal cell, methyl and hepatocyte, or they are stored by the secretory vessel, uh, secretory vesicle, reuptake and secreted the really, uh, by the uh, secretory vesicles or degradation, uh, degradation by the enzyme either monoamino oxidase or catecholamine or methyl transferase. It holds in the metabolite, which is methadrenaline and methanoradrenaline. And then it can also be with more, oxygen, more uh, metabolism consequence action in the venal mendelic acid. So, the fate either uptake by non-neuronal cell, اللي هو ممكن تكون the hepatocyte, or they are reuptake by the secretory vesicle, or degrade degradation by the monoamino oxidase or the COMT enzyme. That حول إلى metabolite, اللي هو the met adrenaline and no met noradrenaline. ممكن بعد أكو subsequent steps ممكن تحول later on إلى venal mendelic acid. Will a metabolite or all these whether they are metabolite, which is met adrenaline or normal adrenaline, they are secreted. Will catecholamine all are secreted in the urine? Of course, the half-life is very short. As we said, it's a few minutes to a few few seconds to few minutes. They are water soluble, while the adrenal cortical hormone are lipid soluble, and they have a rapid fluctuating plasma level. Why they are have a rapid fluctuating? Uh, because it is changed according to the stress condition Be and because they are have a short half-life and because they are rapid fluctuating plasma levels so depending on measurement in the blood sample is very challenging because it, it may change from uh, from time to time very rapidly the function of these uh, hormone el catecholamine they increase the rate and force of contraction of the heart they increase the metabolic rate by increasing the oxygen consumption and production of heat and also they have a metabolic effect they have a lipolytic effect stimulate the breakdown of fat cell to release the fatty acid and this is very important in stress condition to produce more energy 
and reserve the blood glucose for the tissue that exclusively use it and also it can break the glycogen the stored glycogen in the glucose stored in the liver uh, and in other tissues to, to, to produce uh, glucose and this is very important to face the any stressful condition also it will cause construction of the blood vessel this will increase the resistance and increase the blood pressure and and help the person to face any uh, st stressful condition and also cause dilatation of the bronchial so that more air can enter into the it uh, whenever the body uh, respond or uh, exposed to a stressful channel challenge in this uh, condition the catecholamine response it will be increased and it is uh, usually a short-term stress responder uh, as a result it will the catecholamine help the body to face this uh, the stressful condition by increasing the heart rate increasing the blood pressure increase the breakdown of glycogen and the breakdown of uh, uh, lipid to release energy and also in, uh, cause relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscle so that more air can enter into the uh, air passage into the lung all these will help to uh, maintain the normal homeostasis when the body face any stressful condition. All this reaction is called the flight and fight reaction. Because the catecholamine have a short half-life and because they are rapidly changing uh, their level in the blood, so it is some, uh, there is some challenge when we have or when we suspect that the patient have abnormality in the uh, adrenal medullary hormone level and uh, we suspect that he may have few chromocytoma or other condition that need and we need to measure the level of this product so uh, we can measure either the urine or the blood the urine is the preferred sample and we can measure the either the catecholamine and or preferably we can measure their metabolite which are called the metanephrines uh, because they are more stable so we can measure their level in the urine uh, that's collected over a 24 hour. So the first uh, test is the urine catecholamine and metabolite. This is the first one. Also we can measure, but it is less uh, preferable, is to measure the plasma catecholamine and metanephrine. The most important point we must put in our mind when we want to measure this uh, hormone or their metabolite is to uh, minimize the level of stress to uh, the lowest level uh, because uh, the stress will affect uh, the result of the test so the patient must be supine for at least 30 minutes and uh, with the cannula is inserted and the patient is completely at rest before we draw a blood sample.